Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm going to show how to make a grain-free chicken broccoli cheese casserole. If you have seen my other chicken casserole recipe, if you haven't, I'll have that link down below so you can check that out. If you have, then this one is going to be kind of along those same lines. That one's more of like a chicken pot pie type of a casserole. And then this one is like your broccoli rice cheese casserole. So it's, it is quite a different casserole. One thing that it has in common though is that really special gravy that we use for like the cheese type sauce in this or the cream of chicken soup type of a cheesy sauce. So let's jump in. I'm gonna show you how to make this. We had a busy day today. We wanna get dinner on the table fast and this is one of my favorite recipes for doing that. So I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and then I'm just gonna start assembling everything. I'm going to start with the chicken portion. So just like in my other casserole recipe, we're gonna make a special gravy that's extremely nutrient rich. And I am gonna do it a little bit differently this time. I'm going to add the cooked carrots. So this chicken right here is one that we had last night for dinner. So we ate some of the chicken meat, some of the carrots, some of the meat stock for dinner last night. And then today we are using the rest of the chicken to make two nine by 13 casserole dishes. And so if you have a good size chicken, you know, medium to large size chicken, you can get three dinners out of it, which I love being able to stretch one chicken that far. It's a really nice thing to be able to do. So I am going to include the carrots into the sauce this time. And I like to do that because they add a really nice element to the sauce. They also add a nice color. So the cheese that I use is a raw cheddar that I get. I'll have that link down below if you'd like to grab some, but it doesn't impart any type of a yellow color at all. And so the carrots give the sauce a, a really nice yellow color that just reminds you of like the most delicious comfort food casserole. So I really like including the carrots in there for that. I will also include some cooked onions. I don't typically include all of them, but if some make their way in there, that's fine. I don't really add the celery from the meat stock, but I'm just gonna put all the carrots in there. And then I'm going to go through the chicken quickly. I am going to put all the meat into my casserole dishes and I'll just set it in there for now and then I'll kind of shred it up with my hands once we're ready to kind of assemble everything. And then everything else besides the bones is gonna go into the blender. So all the skin, all the cartilage, all the connective tissue, this little part that's on the end of that breastbone there is a really important piece of cartilage. So I'm just gonna go through and sort all that out. Skin, cartilage, fat, connective tissue all goes into the blender and the meat goes into my nine by 13 casserole dishes. So on the bones, there's these caps of cartilage. I go ahead and toss those in. Okay, so then I'm just going to shred up the chicken a little bit with my hands so that it's in the size of pieces that you want to be in the casserole. And then once I've done that, I'm going to just put half of the chicken meat into each pan and then just kind of make sure that it's broken up small enough. The more time you have, the more thorough you can be with this, but I am in a hurry. I am wanting to get dinner on the table quickly, so I'm just, you know, if some pieces are still a little big, that's okay. All right, that's pretty good. The next thing I'm gonna do is to finish making my sauce here, and so to the blender, I'm going to add about a cup of meat stock. And then to the blender, I'm going to add about a half of a cup of butter. And then that's it. When I make the meat stock with the right amount of salt and pepper and 
add this. It turned out great. I did not find any need to add any other seasonings at all. So I'm just going to blend this. My blender has a soup setting, which bl blends things very, very smooth. And that's my favorite setting for this type of a sauce or gravy or like a cream of chicken soup is what we're making kind of. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, blend this. Whatever setting you do, you just want it nice and smooth. So yes, go ahead. So if this happens to where it's having a little bit of trouble getting enough liquid to blend properly, then what I do is just add a little bit more meat stock, like half a cup more, and then just kind of stir it around in there. Get going a little bit better. Okay, so as the blender was blending for me, I just went ahead and started slicing up some mushrooms. These are optional. You can leave them out if you want to, but I do like to add them. So I'm just going to finish that up, and then all we have to do is add the remaining ingredients, mix it together in the pan, and put it into bake. I'll just put about half of these into each pan. All right, and then the next thing I like to add is the cauliflower. So I'm adding riced cauliflower. And this is amazing because when you're eating the casserole, it feels, it seems like you're just eating rice. So I don't defrost it or anything. I think anybody would enjoy this casserole. Like you don't have to be into healthy eating or whatever. So the next thing that I'm going to add is the broccoli. And I guess since we're mixing it together, the order probably doesn't even matter that much, but this is what I do. And then two cups of cheese for each casserole. All right, and then the next thing is to pour our sauce over. We're gonna try to get roughly half of the sauce in each. See how that's like the most ultimate comfort food, yummy looking sauce. And then when it's mixed with the cheese and the cauliflower rice in there, you just feel like you're eating somebody's, like anybody's homemade casserole. It has amazing flavor, all the right textures and the melted cheese, and it's just really good. So the next thing is to just mix so that everything is just kind of mixed around and combined. I was thinking that a giant bowl might work for this step. If you had a bowl big enough to just put, you know, two casseroles worth in. I do have a bowl that would be big enough, but it's full of tallow right now, beef tallow. So it's not available to use. So I just have been mixing it in the casserole dish. And I guess when you do it this way, the benefit is you don't have that extra dirty dish of the bowl. All you have is your two pans and your blender, and that's pretty much it. So I guess it does cut down on dishes that way. Okay, just kind of mostly trying to make sure that that sauce is combined with everything. And then once it is, then just kind of making sure it's spread back out in the casserole. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing with the other one. And then something that you could do if you wanted is to, at this point, right before baking, would be a good time to freeze. So mix it around and then freeze it, and then you would have a freezer meal ready to go down the road if you wanted. So that would be another option too. But I'm gonna go ahead and just bake both of them since we'll, we'll use them up. OK, 
Okay, so then at this point, I'm just gonna put them into the oven, into my 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for 40 minutes. That is the correct amount of time that I've found to uh, make sure that that frozen cauliflower, frozen broccoli has time to defrost and then the whole thing cook. So 40 minutes and then I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. The time is up, so we're ready to pull these out of the oven. Okay, so you can see cheesy, delicious goodness. Okay, we'll go ahead and dish some of this up so you can see what it looks like when you serve it. I love that this meal contains like everything in one dish. You have your meat, your vegetables, your meat stock. So you don't have to have that separately when you eat this for dinner. And then all you need to do is add a little bit of fermented food. We'll probably put a little sauerkraut on the side and there you go. Perfect for a busy night, perfect for a freezer meal, for giving to somebody who needs a meal and just enjoying. So I hope that you really enjoy this recipe and I hope that you give it a try. If you do, please let me know how you liked it. Check out that description box down below for links to a lot of the places where I like to buy the ingredients, including that raw cheese that I use and other things. Also check out that description box for links to free eBooks and other goodies. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else you think would like it and needs maybe some new dinner inspiration. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time, bye.